Streamers, VTubers, why aren't you multi-streaming? And if you are, why aren't you doing it right? Today, we're gonna be going over how to properly multi-stream. We're gonna be covering everything from what apps you'll need, what plugins you'll need, how to set it up, and even good tips on how to do it correctly. As I've been in calls with staff from most of these websites, and I know how to properly do it without getting you in trouble and having the best experience for both you and your viewers. Now, before we get into it, I am going to put a table of contents up on the screen because I know not everyone needs help with every part and there should be timestamps as well as it being timestamped down in the little bar at the bottom of the video. What we'll essentially be going over is what apps you'll need and what plugins as well, what the best OBS settings are, how to make a vertical canvas, and also some tips for the vertical canvas to make the viewing experience better for your viewers, as well as how to properly stream on multiple websites at once, because some websites have different rules that you might not know about. So go ahead and skip to that or watch the whole thing if you really want the best setup possible. Anyway, let's get into it. The first thing we'll go over is what apps slash plugins you'll need. Number one is OBS. You can either download this directly from their website or from Steam. I'll have it linked in the description. I personally have the Steam version because I like to have the latest version of OBS whenever possible. The second thing you'll need is Stream Elements Multi-Stream. Stream Elements is one of the best bots out there anyway that most people use on their streams. They offer sponsorships. They have amazing infrastructure. They offer overlays that you can use as browser sources. The Stream Elements Multi-Stream plugin, what it does is it uses less resources and it makes it so you can actually connect connect your stream elements to those accounts such as YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, etc. directly. Unlike the other services, Stream Elements actually has direct contact with TikTok and therefore you don't need a stream key. You just connect your account on TikTok and it's that easy. I'll actually show you that later. The next thing you'll need if you are a VTuber specifically is something called Spout2 Capture. This is how you put your model transparently on the screen and it also uses less resources. And then the last thing you'll need is a plugin called Composite Blur. That is actually for the vertical canvas, which I will again show you later. I will be linking all of these things in the description. So if you don't know where they are, don't worry, they'll be right there for you. The next thing we're gonna be going over is the quote unquote best OBS settings. Now I do wanna mention for multi-streaming as a whole and my OBS settings, you need a pretty beefy PC as well as some decent internet. Let's get into it. Number one is enhanced broadcasting. After you've connected your Twitch account, there's this setting right here called enabled enhanced broadcasting. Let's say you're streaming in 1080p, normally on Twitch, sometimes they give you options for viewers with worse internet to be able to watch in a lower quality, but they don't always offer it and they don't necessarily offer it in every resolution. What this does is it makes several copies of your stream. For example, it will have 1080p, 720p, 480p, 360p. They'll have all those options for people watching. So if someone is experiencing interruptions because of their internet or device, they can switch to one of those. It's just a better viewing experience. I would just turn this on and then turn these both to auto. It'll usually use around 10 to 12,000 bitrate kbps. The next thing is additional canvas. You actually don't need to worry about this one right now. I will have a graphic on the screen that'll show it, but essentially Twitch is experimenting with dual streaming, which basically allows you to stream in both vertical and horizontal format. And because I'm a Twitch partner, I have beta access to this. So you should just leave this at none. I can't change it because I'm recording. Next, let's go to output. On output, what I have here is uh, this first thing is actually for Spotify. I have my Twitch volume track checked and I have it on two and audio track is on one, I'm able to make it so I can listen to Spotify on stream without it showing up in the VOD to avoid copyright. If you want a more in-depth tutorial for this, let me know in the comments, but I'll, I'll kind of go over it a bit later as well. Okay, here are my settings for the stream. Rate control, this 8500, again, this doesn't really matter. When you turn on enhanced broadcasting, it'll take over it. These are my settings. I do slower, this and this and this. These all are just like pretty dang good without being overkill. Most viewers won't notice the difference. If you have two PC set up, you can probably go even better with these. But for my 4090, this is what I find works the best. And then obviously in audio, you can turn all of these to 320. Again, it's not really necessary, whatever. In video, obviously this depends on you. I stream in 1080p. I do lands 60 FPS. I downscale it to 1080p from 2K, 1440p. And that's really it for that. Keep in mind, these settings are what work best for me and my computer. I kind of finicked with my computer a lot. So if you want me to make a tutorial on like why I chose what Windows settings and NVIDIA settings, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do that in the future. Next, we're going to be going over how to actually make the vertical canvas. I know the screen might look a little weird right now, but it's fine. Just 
bear with me. First thing you want to do, look at this tab, the Stream Elements Multi-Streaming tab, which you can find at the top right over here. You go to Live Docs, Stream Elements Multi-Streaming. There it is, if it's not on already for you. It should be on automatically when you install it, but if it isn't, it's right up there. So you see all my canvases here. Now you're wondering, well, how do I, what does this have to do with making canvas? So what you do is you click the little three dots and you'll see canvas and create new canvas. And in this, you're going to be choosing vertical or whatever, blah, blah, blah. you can name it whatever, the name doesn't matter. In the resolution, however, this is where you want to choose 1080 by 1920 vertical. I'm not going to add it because I already have one, but that's just how you do it. Now that you have the vertical, this is what you should see. And you can put this on any part of your OBS, it doesn't matter. What you want to do is you want to go to canvas settings and it'll look something like this over here and you go down here. So these are the settings that I use. Again, this is for high end computers. You can lower these settings and change them as you need, but I have good internet and I have a good computer and this just makes the stream look as nice as possible without being too taxing on your computer. These settings have worked perfectly for me. I have finicked with these settings for over a year, maybe two years now, to be honest. These are just what works better for me. I'm not going to explain each setting. Like I said, if you want me to go more in depth, let me know in the comments, but most people just want to copy the best settings they see, which I literally have done myself. And these are just the best. That's really it. Once you have those, you press the save changes at the bottom right. And now you have the best looking stream. Now that you have the settings for your vertical stream set up, next let's talk about sources. So sources are pretty simple. You click the three little dots, add source. And then let's say you want to add game capture. You add game capture and then you'll see this pop up. You can make a new scene, but instead what you should do is add an existing scene. That makes it so you can choose the existing game capture from your horizontal canvas and add it as a source. Now, why you would want to do this is it uses less resources. And when you switch the game capture scene on OBS, it'll automatically switch it on your vertical canvas. So then you don't have to change the game on both every time you switch games, right? And I did that for pretty much all of my sources. All my sources are pretty much copied from my horizontal camera because I would just add it and then choose an existing one. Now, remember earlier when I mentioned getting a composite blur plugin? Now, here's why. These are the only two scenes that I've added new to the vertical canvas that are not on the horizontal canvas. The reason why I do this is because if you look at the screen right here, you can see how clean it looks, how nice it looks. When people are watching you play, this is what they see. This is what a TikTok viewer sees when they join your stream. Now, as you can see, the way that I have it cut up, it shows the main game in the middle. The chat and notifications are not in the game screen, so people can see more of the game and less of the sides are cut off. Behind my model and under the chat, there is the same game and that's where the composite blur comes in. What I do is I stretch it to the length of the game uh, thing. As you can see, one, this one is stretched to the top and then down. And then the other one is the opposite, stretched to the top and then down. Pretty simple. And then you just add the blur as a filter. If you downloaded the plugin, it should just be composite blur. I didn't mess with it. I just left it uh, default. And look, it looks really nice and clean. Again, here, I'll show you the example. This is what it looks like when someone clicks into my TikTok stream. As you can see, my model is up there. Down here, you can still see the game in the background, but blurred, but you can see the text. The blurring makes it so the game doesn't like distract too much from the text. It's really nice. And then at the bottom right, you can see I have, uh, that's my Spotify for people who want to know what I'm listening to. So pretty simple, right? Next, we're going to go over how to connect your accounts to your OBS to multi-stream using Stream Elements Multi-Stream. You remember earlier when I said that Stream Elements Multi-Stream is the best? Well, the reason it's the best is because for sites like TikTok, you usually need to get a stream key, which by the way, is near impossible. You need to like gotten through a company. It's really complicated and convoluted and kind of annoying, but Stream Elements has direct contact with TikTok where you don't need that. You can just connect your account directly like this. You're going to press the little plus down here, click TikTok. This is going to pop up. You press connect. It's going to open your browser or whatever page and then boom, connection successful. You just authorize it and that's it. And you can see right here, TikTok is connected. Now, when you are setting this up, you want to make sure you choose the correct canvases. So this is the default one that's in your OBS settings. I don't have Twitch vertical selected because it doesn't need it. I do YouTube vertical, horizontal, kick horizontal, TikTok vertical, and Twitter horizontal. Now I'm going to go over each website, why I stream the way that I do, and also some really good tips for each website. Because I have been in calls with staff from some of these websites, and I know a lot about how their algorithms work, etc, etc. First is YouTube. I actually don't do horizontal horizontal and vertical at the same time anymore. I used to do both and you totally can do both, especially if you're a primarily YouTube streamer, but YouTube's algorithm doesn't really push horizontal streams beyond your subscribers. And that's only if they have notifications on. Here's actually a good uh, example. This stream right here is the exact same stream. You see that one is vertical, one is horizontal. One has 290 views, one has 9,500. Now the reason why this happens is because the vertical version of YouTube streams puts you in the short section of YouTube. The 
short section actually has an algorithm that pushes out short streams rather than the horizontal, which is totally up to your subscribers to happen to have seen it. So I usually leave horizontal off and only do vertical YouTube streams nowadays. You can totally do both though. I don't think there is any downside to doing it. However, for the algorithm and my numbers, I usually private all my VODs on YouTube when I'm done because I have a dedicated VOD channel and also I don't want my numbers to be kind of skewed and different. TikTok, you can do vertical or horizontal, but I really recommend vertical. TikTok pushes vertical streams more. That's what I would recommend. For TikTok specifically, when you are live on TikTok, there are some things that you can't do. They're very, very sensitive to certain words. If you say the word gay too many times, which I know is strange, but they get mad at it. You also cannot mention Twitch. If you mention competitors, they have an AI that listens to your streams. So you have to be very, very careful about what you say. You can swear. I wouldn't say anything too extreme because TikTok's algorithm for moderating live streams is very sensitive. The way around this is you should say purple app. If you want to direct people to your Twitch stream, you say, hey, come to my purple app or check out purple app. And if you're wondering why stream to TikTok at all, TikTok's streaming platform is really big. The algorithm pushes out new streams and it's really easy to grow using your stream on TikTok. Another question I get asked is, well, what about moderation? How do I moderate all of these? You can go about it one of two ways. Let's say Twitch is your main streaming platform and you want most people to watch you on Twitch. I would focus on only reading the Twitch chat. However, Stream Elements Multi-Stream actually comes with a multi-chat and a TikTok chat. The reason why they're different is just because of TikTok's rules. It also comes with an activity feed that goes over all of them. You can toggle activity feed from all the websites, whatever you want. You can click into them, do tips, see what I mean? Follow subscriptions, etc. You can have all the activities that you want to see on here. This is also a multi-chat that shows all the chats that you want it to show. It makes it really easy for you to read several chats at once. This all comes with Stream Elements Multi-Stream. It's a package deal. So you really don't have to worry about anything. All you have to do is worry about the streaming itself. Back to what we were talking about. If you want people to focus on your Twitch streams, answer Twitch chat the most. Streaming on TikTok is a little strange because VTubing is kind of weird on TikTok. It's 50-50 whether you run into a VTuber fan or a hater, it doesn't matter. What I have done in the past is I won't have that many moderators on TikTok. What I have had happen is people who watch my TikTok streams and are like normal people or like adults who don't want to deal with like the people who are kind of annoying is they will find my Twitch from my TikTok. Twitch will always be my main platform for streaming anyway. But yeah, YouTube vertical is also very nice. You can kind of treat YouTube vertical like TikTok. You could either heavily moderate everything or you could kind of moderate YouTube shorts and TikTok less and just hope that the people who actually like your content will just find your Twitch. They usually do. And then of course there is Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. I just do horizontal. So basically once you set everything up, this should be essentially what your OBS looks like. This is the way that I have it set up and this is the cleanest for me and the easiest for me. As for the multi-chat and the TikTok chat, I have those on a secondary monitor to my right. Obviously you can put them wherever you want. Here they are. This is it. You can put them wherever you want on your screen. Uh, you can even attach them if you want, but it's just too cluttered for me. So I just put them on a second monitor. Okay. <sighs> That was a lot to go over. Hopefully this helps someone somewhere in some way, especially my VTuber friends out there or any streamers actually, everyone's a friend. You'd be surprised even though VTubing itself is kind of like a technology oriented hobby slash job, depending on who you are. A lot of VTubers have no idea how tech works. <laughs> but luckily for you, I'm a tech nerd. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Or if you want me to make any tutorials for anything else tech related, I'm a big tech nerd, computer nerd, perfectionist, whatever you want to call it. If this video helped you in any way, or if you just like hearing me yap, make sure to like and subscribe and comment. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.